Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with another album review. And this time it's David Hepworth and deep 70s underrated cuts from a misunderstood decade. This is David Hepworth, deep 70s underrated cuts from misunderstood decade. Well, not misunderstood by me, probably my favourite decade. 24 tracks on two LPs, the essence of the 70s over four themed LP sides compiled by David. And... You know, the book, which I'll show you in the summary, is well worth it. It's a double album. Lots of information here, which I'll talk more about this um, when, I, when I go into the summary. So I just want to show you what the, the package is like. It's not a gatefold. It's a twin pack sleeve. Um, but each of, the, each of the songs featured on here is actually has has been written about by David. So this is Young American, Jesse Winch is a big star, Andy Pratt, Greg Allman, Bobby Charles, John Prine, Delaney and Bonnie. And on the other side, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, Freddie King, Johnny Winter, Status Quo, ZZ Top, Little Feet, J Gales Band, Eddie and the Hot Rods, Montrous. Regiment on the next album, Sandy Denny, Marion Faithful, Joan Umber Trading, Kate and Annie Maragall, Richard and Linda Thompson, and Blue Ball Blues, Robert Palmer, Terry Reed, The Motors, The Records, Roy Harper. And these are all pressed, these, both of these records are on absolutely clear vinyl. They sound absolutely uh, fantastic. But I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about, um, what what the back of the album says as well because I, I like what um david says here and i think it really puts it in context of how the tracks were chosen um and there's some insightful stuff that david talks about which i completely 100 percent agree with so that is deep 70s now david hepworth is a musicologist beyond compare in many ways i knew him from the old whistle test and i used to i used to think sorry david that he had a thing against rock music. I grew up with rock music, and actually, thanks to people like David, I now love all genres of music because I was challenged to listen to stuff that I didn't find easy at first. But the real kind of entry point where I started to think, this guy really knows his onions, was this, 1971, Never a Dull Moment, probably one of my favourite music books ever where he puts forward the argument that 1971 was the best year for, for, for music overall, not just rock music. And I thought, well, you know, surely it's 1973, 76, 1970, 60, whatever. I was about to say 69. But when you look at the cover and you start to see David Bowie, Black Sabbath, Elton John, T-Rex, The Doors, Humble Pie, Faces, The Rolling Stones, Genesis, um, Pink Floyd, and on the inside back cover, even more stuff, um, Deep Purple, Alice Cooper, Jethro Tull, um, The Groundhogs, The Who, etc., etc. You start to think, hmm, may have a point. There was so much, and, and that was all happening in one year. But this album... This double album features the 70s. Um, and so it's not just one year. And it's basically um, David Hepworth has picked tracks in, and put them into little themes on each side of the album that he feels represents the decade. I never knew, for instance, there's a bit where he says, I bought the first album by Montrose and also the first album by Valerie Simpson and didn't think either was unusual. I had no idea. He bought the first Montrose album. I would have felt so different about my perception of Mr. Hepworth. Montrose, best album ever, best debut album of all time. Anyway, to this. Um, I love this. I absolutely, it's, um, as you just saw, it's, you know, great vinyl pressings. It's also available on CD, by the way. Um, but Young American, Jesse Winchester, big star, Bob Charles, Andy Pratt doing Avenging Annie, which, as he mentions, that Roger Daltrey felt moved to record his own version later on. I've got that. Um, and I think he's right. Um, Greg Orman, please call home from laid back. Oh, he's right. What he says here about, um, you know, the, he spent extra money on choirs and strings. This was a track actually first by the Orman brothers. Um, but Greg had such a precious gift as any singer or daughter or someone can have. You just trust him. I just love... Um, Greg Ullman and uh, John Prine, Delaney and Bonnie. It's a great track as well. And as you saw, it's got all the kind of 
the album covers at the bottom. And I think it, it works really well because I've, I've got into Jesse Winchester more recently. Some of these other artists I'm not completely au fait with. Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers on side two. Uh, Freddie King's version of Going Down, which I bought on a Best of Freddie King, I think, from A&M Records in the mid-70s. It is, it is the dog's doodars, really. Johnny Winter and Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo by Rick Derringer. Great choice, great choice. And then Status Quo, In My Chair, where... David says, I will not have a word said against the quote, particularly the classic lineup with John Collagher on drums. I saw many times in concert during the 70s when they regularly raised the roof in a way most bands never learned. Status quo knew that any bunch of clowns would rock, but it takes something extra to master the role. Nothing embodied that role better than this 1970 single of In My Chair by Status Quo. Montrose. Now the quo. Um, yep. Yeah. Works really well, and then called ZZ Top just left Chicago. Oh, what a track that is. Uh, what a groove. What a groove that track has. Little Feet Trouble, I'll be honest with you. Um, Little Feet is a band that I've got into only in the last few years. Two minutes, 19 seconds of excellence. The J Girls Band, Whamma Jamma, cool. And, and then... We, were, we moved to 1975 um, or 76 when this actually came out. And Eddie and the Hot Rods get a demo originally written by Bob Seeger. I don't know if you've ever heard Eddie and the Hot Rods in the Marquee EP, which is what this is from. They also did Gloria on that. Um, it's just, it's the energy. You can see why it says here that um, there was a period about six months when they seemed to be the hottest act in the UK. Um I mean, they could have been, you would have thought they could have been bigger than the Sex Pistols. They, they were like so energised, but it just didn't happen. And they turned into like being seen as just like a pub band. But this period of Eddie and the Hot Rods, um, Get Out of Denver, it's just, it's just incredible. And then we move over to sides three and four. Side three is Blue Ball Blues um, and Robert Palmer uh, track. Terry Reed, which is great, but the track on here that I realised this is a band. I remember I only remembered this track when I played this track, um, and I know there's quite a few people in the Now Spinning Facebook group that really like this band, and it's the Motors and Dancing the Night Away. Of course, they had a follow with Airport, which, which I think I kind of thought, oh, is that what they're like? But when I heard this again, six minutes, 34 seconds, Dance the Night Away, that rhythm playing and the, the energy behind it, um, it, it, it put here that um, th this is a band that appealed to everyone from heavy metal fans to hard rock punks to followers of what was in the charts. And I can see that now because I just loved it. And I, the chances of me buying a Motors album or that little box set that came out from Cherry Red is quite high. But I love that song off this so then there's the records which is a band i'm not that familiar with and then there's roy harper when an old cricketer leaves the crease seven minutes and 12 seconds long i really feel as if i should have more roy, Har roy harper in my collection i mean let me know where i should start for those of you who actually are roy harper fans but this track um, originally dedicated to England cricketers Jeff Boycott and Jon Snow, an elegy for the lengthening shadows of life. He's now 45 years old. Absolutely love that. And then side four, the Monstrous, Monstrous Regiment. This is my favourite side of this album. Sandy Denny, solo, from her third solo album it's just beautiful marion faithful the ballad of lucy jordan love that joan armor trading down to zero great kate and annie mcgarrigal heart like a wheel and then richard and linda thompson dimming of the day darcia seven minutes 15 seconds long that this side to me is just absolutely incredible with the albums across the bottom as they as they are on all sides really um, and David says there are precious few songs that pull off the trick of combining perfect wisdom and perfect scansion. You pour me as the moon pours on the tide. 
You know just where I keep my better side, Richard wrote. And Linda sang from their 1975 album, Pour Down Like Silver. You're fortunate that this LP features two of the greatest love songs ever written. Um, absolutely loved it. Um, great, great track listing. I think the only um, rules, not rules, but guidelines from Demon Music Group was to say to David, don't be obvious. And he hasn't been obvious. Um, and I like that because I was drawn towards this, obviously it was for the songs and some of the bands and artists that I knew, but more importantly for the stuff thinking, I don't know that, I don't know that, but how does it fit in with the theme? Lovely stuff. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Please subscribe, ring that bell, share my videos and web pages, wherever you may like. And thank you for becoming patrons and supporting me as you do. Remember, music is the healer and the doctor. Take care, keep spinning those discs, and I shall see you all very, very soon.